and the way the results are going and I tried so hard, uh, working harder than I ever did to, to try and turn it around, but it just didn't seem any light at the end of the tunnel. And I thought that for the best interest of Wraith Rovers Football Club and for the best interest of Peter Henderson, that I would uh, talk to the board and see where they're coming from. And after I'd spoke to them, then I made the right decision of, of leaving. Looking back from now, Peter, is there much you would do differently? A lot of them done differently, David. There's a lot of them done differently. Uh, but as I say to the chairman and all, my two and a half year at the club. Uh, if I've ever got a job anywhere else, they'll get the benefit of the two and a half year I went through at Wraith Rovers. And I believe that Wraith Rovers will still stay in the first division. And I just hope and pray they get a wee run in the cup and eases everybody's problems up there. And then they can forget about Peter Henderson. So Kenny Black in the dugout yesterday. Our man Dean Adamson asked Chairman Danny Smith who is next. John McCormack was obviously favourite for the job until yesterday. So you're going to have to go back to the drawing board and do you have anybody in mind currently? Uh, well, John was part of a shortlist. John was the first one we spoke to. Unfortunately, he's declined the position. So, as I say, we had another board meeting this morning and we'll be speaking to other people early next week. If Kenny Black has any ambition towards the manager's job, he certainly gave himself every chance with this performance. Four minutes gone and it's not so much a last, but at last, Smith and Jones. And a setting up map and a good finish to put the bottom club ahead against the league leaders. Airdrie, as you might expect, came back strongly. John Henry combining with Mark Roberts. And after some nice footwork from the former Kelly man, the chance was set up for Craig McPherson. Now only if the finish could have matched the build up. Rovers showed they too were capable of good football and a nice build up here put pressure on the home defence and resulted in another chance for Jones. Alan Ferguson up to the task and in the second half Airdrie soon discovered Sammy Monin just as impressive. Rovers determination keeping their goal intact. And how's this for a counter attack? Andy Clark's cut back and if Andy Smith had finished it, you would have just witnessed our goal of the day. When all else fails, plan B for Airdrie is the head of Kevin James. His flick on and Lee Gardner puts his header over. A couple of minutes later, the same move but this time James gets on the end of his own flick on and is denied by the crossbar. And so, with time running out, it seemed as though Rovers would be the second team to beat Airdrie at home this season. But we were forgetting the coil factor. It ain't over until the thin man scores, and in the 90th minute, with his first shot on goal, Owen does it again. That wasn't quite the end of the action, as Rovers kept fighting for a winner that would mean so much to them. Tejero had already missed one chance in injury time. And with a patient build up, Jay Steen was to come close. The Rovers players perhaps making a point for Peter Hederson and proving they can be a match for anyone in the league. I think when you get to the stage of the game in the, in the last couple of minutes, when you're 1 0 up and against the league leaders, I, I don't think you can count on anything. Um, we battled away, it's been a very, very difficult week for the club and everyone concerned with it. And then we spoke to the players, myself and Graeme Robertson today, and I think it was very, very important we got a, a, a better performance than we have been getting in recent weeks. And no doubt about it today, the guys did great. I thought uh, there were a few players had off days today, but the spirit and the, the effort was just absolutely phenomenal. And once again, there was that man Coyle to the rescue. Yeah, it was a super goal, aye. Well, you couldn't miss it, let me fair. It'll be, uh, Telling lies if I were to stand here and say I didn't want the job. Obviously, the, the, the board of directors uh, have got to sit down and, and, and think and, and see who they are wanting to appoint. But I'm very, very much up for it. You know, I think even we need a bit of stability. But obviously, they have got uh, views on that, and if they want to bring someone more experienced. But as I say, I'm up for it, and I, I really enjoyed it today. I mean, I've got to be honest with you, I did enjoy it. A bit nerve-wracking nerve at near the end, but even they've been involved with the players. And I think if you get commitment and effort like that, it makes it a little bit easier.